all the, quote, fallen angels, end quote, and all of those beings have architecture and, and, and they have put into place everything, including um, frequencies that hold people back. Like, for example, every commercial you hear, everything on television, everything on the radio, every single soundbite that has music to it is designed to keep you back designed to, they don't, I mean, it's not consciously done, but it's, it's, you know, there are people that, that are designing the sound grid, the sonic grid. So that you're bombarded with noise 24 seven that is disharmonious, which would be in, um, actual frequency of like 741 F sharp, uh, F sharp and the 440 Hertz equals a scale is, uh, called the, uh, note of Satan. Okay. And what it does is it causes people to, if you are exposed to it enough, it will cause you to go crazy and kill somebody. I mean, that's, it will keep you believing this scale of 440 equals A will keep you believing that this realm is the main realm and that the spiritual realm or the actual reality realm is unreality. And this reality is all there is. You'll cling to this. And that's what the music and sound bites will do. It will reinforce you as a meat body, dense. You know, it will reinculcate fear into your souls so that you will not become a vessel of light. You will be enslaved as you are today, as we all are. Um, well, I'm free in Christ. No, you're not really free in Christ. You can say that all you like, but to be free is to really overcome the world. And you're in the middle of being tested. I mean, you can say you're happy you're on the journey, happy that you're going to be overcoming the world, happy that you're going through it, but you haven't gotten there yet. Not until you see the two-tiered reality. They say enlightenment and I say enlightenment. What is enlightenment? For them, for the physical meat body types, it's who are trying to get to spirit, who would agree with me intellectually that spirit is Trump's flesh. Um, but then we disagree on how to get there. And they, they say, well, there's many gates, many doors. And I said, no, there's only one door. You're wrong, you know, and you can keep, you know, generation after generation, you know, you come and go, you write your books. It doesn't help anyone. It doesn't do anything with your secrets. I know people up uh, real way up in masonry. They can't do anything. So you just keep on like that. That's fine. But, you know, they'll try to do it through works, right? And they'll use even Ouija boards to help them. Anything that will keep them in contact because they believe the key to their evolution is, uh, which is a misnomer to begin with, because there's no such thing as evolution. So they're, but the key to their process is they believe by putting their faith in these disc incarnate entities, which lead them in circles. End of story. But when God calls you to become a vessel of light, what's he doing? He's calling you to become a vessel of light. Uh, he's talking about this um, a supernatural realm <clears throat> that is that is existing completely within you as without you, without any effort of your own save for free will, because he's chosen you as a vessel and you've chosen him through your free will. You become this eternal being to, to as Daniel 12 says to shine like the stars in the firmament forever. So prophetically speaking, what we have today is a call to the body to be prepared to become a vessel of light, which ultimately is, you know, the word made flesh, which is ultimately, you know, the logos, which is ultimately the flaming fire. The reason that a vessel of light doesn't do battle with a fallen angel is because the presence of a vessel of light defeats the fallen angel. There is no inter interchange. There's no need for an interchange. If angels of, of, of or rather vessels of light are released upon the planet, then what happens is the nullification and, and, and uh, it happens in many ways, the null nullification of their world, it becomes nullified by the presence of these other beings. All there is required is the presence. And who are these beings? These are translated beings from the, the meat flesh department, getting through their grid, their prison, breaking out into vessels of light, which means game over for the, uh, for the people here. Now, 
any uh, New Agers, of course, they'll understand what I'm saying. What they don't understand is that it's not about you, New Ager. It's about him, creator. That's it. You're just here at his pleasure. And um, if he wants you to be a vessel of light, you can say yes or no. But, um, you know, his will will be done anyway, with you or without you. <laughs> and so um, I agree that this was always the journey because I always knew, you know, this was where it had to lead. What has to happen uh, just with me personally is, yeah, we are to be salt and light, but what does it mean to be light? And that means to, if you are truly an overcomer of this world, then you will be seen as an overcomer without having to open your lips and, and utter a, a word. Now, the words we utter are sound. So therefore, we would weigh those words more carefully because they make certain sounds and frequencies. Like if I, I say love, or if I say shit, you see, each one carries a different, it's a different transmission, isn't it? Each one has an effect. So imagine saying, being loquacious and saying, Sentence after sentence, paragraph after paragraph, an endless diarrhea of words. What have you done? You've muddied up all the airwaves. You've caused everyone to become confused. <clears throat> and that is exactly what the enemy wants, because the enemy does not want you to ascend beyond the gates of the prison. Now, the prison is a, is a sonic grid surrounding the earth, reinforced by, like I said, sounds, images, satellites, but mainly sound. Harp is sound, okay? Um, chemtrails are sound. There's a certain frequency in the poisons released in the air to, uh, to be able to kill off the population, uh, give them certain diseases, whatever it is, uh, some kind of a boondoggle for um, the a-holes of the world who are just basically agreeing that um, the material realm is the main realm. And they have figured out how to be eternal in these terms. And we've been through this over and over, folks. You know, they want to be eternal and conscious of their eternality in their own terms. In other words, they is God, not God is God, right? That goes all the way back to Genesis. Here we are that, you know, they want to be as gods. They want to be initiated. And what the head guy, the top 5,000th degree guy, you know, who's probably a janitor somewhere, right? <laughs> he won't tell them that no matter how far you get, there's a shield, a limit. There, You can't go past a certain point. So what they're trying to do is mess with the earth and do this sort of 2012 jig so that somehow they can bust through to the other side figuring that Lucifer will bring them through who they can call the great architect or whatever they want. And the answer to that is, no, um, Lucifer is a created being, limited in scope, and can only do actually what he is ordained or created to do. He can't do any more or less than that. And so they're putting their hope in their own emancipation in someone that is trying to kill them. So they can never, so that, yes, I agree that these people fly around in UFOs and they're involved in, they live in, a, in, a, in, a, in another tier of reality. But it's the same, the reality is, as I am explaining, themselves as gods, themselves as emancipating for their own purposes rather than serving the Almighty. You know, I mean, that's always been the battle. And that's, I could just put it in a nutshell, that is their realm. Using um, their technology and their spiritual technology and their spirit guides and their, um, you know, and their hierarchy and their ascended masters and whatever else they're using, uh, even putting Jesus into that category ignorantly because they don't understand what the Logos really is. They think the Logos is the sun god. The Logos is a billion, billion, billion suns. There is no heliocentric world here. The heliocentric world is it but an illusion. They'll agree with that, but then they contradict themselves. Thus, no secret society, because of the corruption within each one, can ascend 
You see, this is the problem. So then they fall back to wanting to be rulers of this planet, deriving their power from you and me, the slaves. In other words, keeping potential vessels of light from becoming who we are. Because if we do that, it means their death. That is why, um, and I heard uh, Whitley Strieber talking about this with the, one of his guests, and you know, the very new agey. And, um, you know, I was tr- trying to, I try to listen to, uh, in the middle of the night, if I, if I wake up, I put on usually Charlie Jones, Texas overnight. That's pretty good. But, uh, on the weekend, it's, uh, you know, you get stuck with, and, you know, but Whitley Strieber is one of these guys that's in that realm of the Art Bell world that I don't mind so much, you know, because he seems like a, gen- I've actually seen him speak at the Writers Guild in, um, uh, in LA, in Beverly Hills, I've seen him speak there, and uh, went to one of his uh, one of his talks about his implants, and then then later he's realized that the implants are highly supernatural things, and that that there are humans that were abducting him with the aliens, and not just aliens, and that there are humans that are part of this whole thing. And I would say, yep, you're dealing with the same group that we've been talking about, that people like Blavatsky and and Crowley and. Oh, the, Crowley is the essence of the secret society, Golden Dawn world. You know what I mean? He would be a very high-level mason along with Albert Pike and the rest of them. But they have failed to storm heaven, as it were, you know, so to speak. They have failed, failed to, to bring humanity to a higher plane of evolution and then they being the leaders of it. Technically, in terms of beings, in terms of beings... I would categorize them as people that were born as slaves who are still children versus people who consider themselves slaves and children and know nothings who really are the parents. That the children are really running the world thinking they're adults where the people thinking of themselves as spiritual children are really the owners of these and really would be the parents of these and would have to discipline them to bring them into alignment. The alignment meaning it's about him, not you. That's the alignment. Therefore, if he's out there, you're here. He's I am and you're not. You're not in the kingdom. That means you don't exist in the kingdom. You're disconnected from your own heart. That which is within you wants to ascend to fuse with the almighty as I am. The fulfillment of John 17 is and I'm sorry that the King James is written in such lousy language. You know, it's. And then we don't have a more pure language because there's so many areas I could retranslate that would sound so luminous and unbelievable. It would rival any New Age documentation or Hinduism or any of those. It would come way up and beyond because let's say the Old Testament, you're dealing with the the Hebrew letters, you know, and each one represents a certain frequency. And then putting those together, you know, all these 